so good morning sir thanks for yeah. this opportunity to interact uh-huh. with you and uh, so yeah. last year I was doing my videos on paper uh, mm-hmm. so i got a message from you and a suggestion that i need to improve it uh, through yeah. animation so i tried that i got some traction uh-huh. and it improved a bit uh, uh-huh. so thanks for that suggestion yeah. and uh, yeah sure so before going to the questions uh, we would love, love to hear your story and uh, can you please tell about your background how you yeah. how this yeah. 30 year long journey started for you i started in uh, 86 I graduated from University of Colorado and I was a graduate student there. Then I came over to San Jose State in California and I did my uh, masters there in uh, 86, 1986 and then uh I was sponsored by my uh, family so I didn't have to have a green card. I already had one. Uh visa so I got a job uh, even before I finished my graduate studies. because i already had a green card and so in 87 i started with a few companies in uh, silicon valley i worked for cadence and i was in the startup mode there with cadence and so i was doing uh, some uh, work with them for uh, uh, dracula tool which is actually a drc lvs tool in physical design then i did uh, some uh, testing and qa for them in my first job there with uh, cadence and then i moved over to uh, intel and i intel there was a chip called 486 dx4 which was before the pentium and there i kind of signed off and uh, the chip and i did the uh, design for them uh, for for the physical side but at that time there was no such thing as physical or front end or back end uh because there was no uh where log then it was not introduced in the market so it was only spice and layout you know so that's what the 486 dx4 uh, chip was about so after that i stayed there with intel for a few years then i became a consultant in 94 So I have been a consultant since then. So most of my jobs are like uh uh physical design, uh CDC um and then uh in the last 10 years I've been doing more front end and back end both but mostly front end work. And uh I have doing analog as well as digital designs. So I've done about 30 digital tape outs and So right now I'm just kind of taking it easy and you know so so I just uh finished my project with Intel but I may be starting on another one which which is an analog uh uh design maybe you must have heard of ADC analog to digital converter yes yeah so I'm designing that part and so they can test it out and so forth a lot of easy thing right now i i'm too much uh, stressed out over the years you know so i don't do real uh, tape out work you know i i stopped doing tape out work about uh, 2015 you know, for intel itself so i've had about 10 uh, about uh, six contracts with intel with philips uh, i worked with cisco uh, what are the companies there's a company called micron redation uh mostly front end from 2005 to 2000, 1997 a lot of it was physical design because there was a lot of demand for physical design not many people can do that it was much easier but it was actually uh paying me more than uh, front end and before that you heard about run set development like a drc lbs for yeah. for like uh, you write run sets like which company is that right now doing that caliber have you heard about caliber ah uh, yes sir i have heard that yes sir yeah so there's a run set development that uh, was uh, something i was doing uh, earlier as a career uh, and then i switched to physical design and then to front end so uh, you know a lot of that is been taking over by tsmc you heard of tsmc right 
Yeah, TSMC was the one now actually does all that, you know, and Intel doesn't do it. It gets it from internally, it develops it. So that's the thing is, is uh, I have experience in all areas, except maybe I don't do much ATPG. That's all. I can do scan insertion and all that, but uh, ATGP involves a fault simulation. So I don't do that. That's the only part I haven't done. And um, that's my background. I don't want to talk too much about it now. <laughs> and, yeah, um, front end is uh, something everybody wants to do. And uh, it's something that you learn a lot at college. And you obviously want to do either uh, analog design in circuits or uh, Verilog. And when I went to college, uh, there was no such thing as a Verilog because Verilog was introduced in 91. Cadence bought a, a, a Verilog and what we were doing is mostly spice, you know. Hmm. So all I was doing in college was, you know, all of, I took a lot of courses on, you know, the uh, analog design uh, and that to bipolar. I did hmm. a lot of bipolar designs and the first thing we did here in, in college was uh, bipolar circuits and uh, uh, the, the digital part did the MOSFETs. So I didn't even do MOSFETs in college hmm. that much. There was just one chapter on MOSFETs and I did BJTs and so all the courses, it all started with uh, diode, uh, you know, junction capacitance hmm. and all that uh, for, for BJTs. So I had to learn everything at work, you know, all the things I've done is all um, at work. So, so you do part-time work and part-time uh, studies and gradually learn very well long myself. Hmm. Uh, learn uh, everything myself. So it's always a learning curve, but now um, they might go into artificial intelligence. So, so ASIC design is slowing down from say five to one nanometer, hmm. maybe, and, and but there won't be that much as much as uh, artificial intelligence, probably the future. Yeah, please go ahead. So, uh, so uh, when you started out uh, in 1980s, there might not be so many tools or softwares available for you to work on. So, right, I was, was just doing everything? spice, spice simulation. I just use spice. Spice, okay. Uh, and most of the stuff probably you might have learned do doing on paper. Yeah, yeah. All, all of it, but like BJTs, hmm. uh, you know, the the bipolar transistor. I did a, a lot of uh, analysis and so forth and circuits manually of BGT circuits, you know, and I had good analog experience. Then the first company I worked for, Cadence, at that time they designed a tool called uh, uh, transistor level, uh, you know, design entry tool, device level editor, they called it. Hmm. So I worked on that tool then, uh, Cadence bought out a Verilog and they decided to do digital, uh, you know, front to back. And then I ended up more in physical design because nobody could do physical design. And there was a lot of demand mm -hmm. for physical design then because everybody had a college experience of front end. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was doing a lot of work uh, from RTL to GDS. Hmm. then for for a lot of companies that didn't have uh, much experience people didn't have so so that was the case then yeah so do you think it adds uh, doing everything manually because at this point we have access to a lot of tools so do yeah. you find any advantage being well if you're doing fpgas uh, it's fully automatic Hmm. Uh, if you're doing ASICs, it's semi semi custom. Hmm. Then uh, the floor planning you have to sort of do it manually. So, like I mentioned, how to do the floor planning for a particular block, right? Hmm. Uh, and uh, you do the floor planning where you place the pins, and then 
you place the macros and uh, standard cells and uh, uh, and the RAMs, right? But the RAMs and the macros, you have to place it manually. Uh, there's no automatic tool to do that. Mm -hmm. So I have said like one million gate uh, block. You still have to do about a uh, hundred macros manually. You have to place them. You can place it automatically, but you still you may not reach the timing you need. So in order to meet timing, you have to do those placement of the macros manually, and then you can place the standard cells in the middle with uh, reasoning and grouping, right? right? And meet meet the timing that. Hmm. So, so so there is a manual process in the semi-custom design process, and hmm. if you do fully custom. Then there's a manual process of doing layout as well as uh, circuit design, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's different ways of doing it, depending on what the demand is in the market. Where Xilinx does a lot of FPGAs that they already have layers one to five or one to three already done, right? Mm. And, and then you have to do layers about three or four and uh, do the routing hmm. of uh, of that part, which is, you know, a lot of it is, uh, uh, you know, automatically done in the Xilinx tools. Hmm. And then uh, you go into semi-custom mode and hmm. Intel and a lot of companies do semi-custom where, in semi-custom, you have to do some manual work because in order to meet timing, you have to do semi-custom. Okay, yes. Uh, sir, these are, uh, these are some questions which we have in common. So this is from our understanding. So it might be less. But, uh, in India, I can see the trend that uh, mm -hmm. most of the people who are doing M-Tech or Masters are able to enter in DLSI easily. But for yeah. freshers, it is a little tough. Yes, So, yeah. so how can a fresher enter? Uh, he must do M-Tech or Masters. Is it a must? Yes, yes. It is a must. Because if you graduate from India, uh, they, they would ask uh, if you want to go to the US or if you want to take projects in India uh, with another company here in the US, they would prefer Masters because there are a lot of other people who will have Masters. So if you have Bachelors, you will be behind in your list of people they want to uh, hire, right? So if there are uh, masters with 10 people and if you are the only one with the bachelors, then they would prefer the guy with the masters, right? In India. So, okay. so if, if you have a bachelors with no experience, then they would prefer a guy with bachelors with no experience and then train him, right? And if you are, say, a bachelor with no experience, then you can enroll in the university, saying that you are currently a graduate student and looking for a job and then trying to finish your master's, you know. But you have to do something, right? You cannot just do where you can just look for a job only with a bachelor's degree. If you have, then you have to say, oh, I have my master's. I'm taking a few courses. Uh, uh, you can like uh, also learn uh, like uh, open open source, right? In open source, I mentioned there are similar tools like Iverilog and what is that? Uh, Tanner. You heard about Tanner? T A N N E R. Yes, sir. You mentioned yeah, it. Tanner for circuit design, or uh, there are sort of tools like that. You can learn from there. Um, in India, I don't know. I think you can go to Bangalore and find a intern job, even with a bachelor. Yeah. You can find find intern job. I think they can hire you as an intern for uh, if you have a bachelor's in in uh, Bangalore. Don't you think? Okay. Okay. Or, because it's it's like. Um, something they're not paying you very highly as a uh, income right yeah. and they, they can always uh, train you and eventually hope that after you finish your masters 
and they can even pay you for your masters. Then you can always, uh, you know, uh, say, okay, look, uh, you have you have been doing this, and you can then finish your masters. You train them and the company, and continue on with the company, and the company would be happy to keep you around since. Uh, You've been training them, uh, you know, been getting trained. So, so that's one thing, you know, that you can look at. Uh, you, you can directly apply for uh, bachelors in, in Bangalore as well. Uh, there are some companies who can, you can, but I don't know how much they could, uh, you know, leverage. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. There are different fields. Uh, at back at 1980s, there weren't many so so many fields as you said yeah. before. Yeah. So now there are physical design, logic design, DFT synthesis, and analog design. Mm -hmm. um, so, which field to choose in this VLSI domain? And uh, uh, of, of course, circuit design is and uh, analog design is the main thing. And since uh, from India, you would have a lot better. Uh, software experience, uh, you can do a verification work. Uh, there, is a, there are a lot of jobs for verification from in, for India. And uh, you can do verification, uh, not in physical design, but in logic design. There are a lot of tools for system very long experience where require a lot of software experience. And uh, that is one area that uh, you can uh, look into if you don't have uh, VLSI experience with front end because Verilog may, may have already uh, blocks designed in Verilog and they do a lot more verification because they want to assemble these chips where they don't need people to do that much Verilog work. So they would do so a lot depends on what the market is saying, you know. Our artificial intelligence is one area that you can do verification there. And I think in artificial intelligence, you could also do uh, wearable design. There could be a lot more uh, as compared to ASIC design, you know, for doing like uh, uh, embedded systems or ARM-based systems or or processor-based systems, uh, you can do artificial intelligence type of opportunities. Okay. Sure. So moving, on to, moving on to the next question. Sir, uh, I have, since I've worked for a few years, I could feel that VLSI uh, is a little stressful because of deadlines and tape outs. Yeah. So how, how to manage this uh, work I, and life balance? So About one week vacation or two week vacation, you have to take that. Here they encourage you to take your vacations. Okay. Yeah, they encourage you to take your vacations and go out on a trip with family, uh, friends, families, and go out for at least uh, three weeks to two, three weeks off uh, if possible. You can, you can plan it ahead of time. You tell them, okay, maybe this summer I'll take uh, one week off, maybe a marriage, something outside of town, Socialize a lot more. I try to socialize here a lot using camping trips, going on various trips in, in you know, uh, local, you know, parties, friends. Uh, so so I, I socialize a lot and keep your contacts, keep yourself, you know. And uh, if you work all, all day throughout the year, then uh, it'll catch up after five, 10 months because your family, you have children and your pressure stress will, will build up. So always, uh, you know, socialize with family and get away from work for about, you know, a few weeks, at least a few weeks a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how will this AI and quantum computing will affect our VLSI industry and, uh, Will it be too large that? Uh, uh, no, I don't. I think artificial intelligence will be on its own, and it won't affect uh, semi-custom design of uh, ASICs. But 
eventually artificial intelligence is the future will have new designs and the other field uh, you mentioned is not possible uh, because they have very small uh, functionality for uh, you know uh, calculations and all that and that that may not be useful that much compared to microprocessors like intel and arm the so in quantum it is not much of a future it will take at least uh, 20 30 years for the quantum computing to take off people uh, like intel are investing on uh, quantum computing and google is but i'm not sure uh, they will just kind of advertise that a lot i think google does that artificial intelligence but also quantum computer because quantum computer is a totally different way of doing and it doesn't come under you know uh, physical design or gds design it's a totally different way of doing it and it hardly takes up you know it takes up a lot of area and space and expensive tools so they might use it for other purposes the special purposes you know but not in the regular microprocessor area and the microprocessor area will continue to flourish they don't have the same demand it had in uh, 10 years back or 20 years back but uh, ai would be uh, uh, something more you know useful and they will they will use ai and microprocessor instead of using quantum computer but they use quantum computer in ai as well so what that link link yes yes okay. please hit that like button and thanks for watching be brave jayan